I do not have an intro, but I have a mini series to continue with you guys. We are back with our floating islands, kind of like a tropical, not tropical, what? Dreamy, like unrealistic, like surreal, like is it really happening or am I dreaming this sort of floating islands, like floating in the sky? Um, and we are continuing. In the last episode, we did create the islands themselves, so we made... Uh, use of the incredible terraforming tool that Planet Zoo has. And now we are adding some water features. And I think it's kind of essential to floating islands that there's waterfalls falling from one of the islands to the next. Um, I might later down the line add a waterfall that just like goes into like nothingness. Like I think that would be cool too. Um, but for now we have waterfalls falling from one island to the other. And um, yeah, that is what we're doing in this episode. I think it is always good to uh, figure out your water situation first, if the water is important. If you have an animal that you're just like, uh, hmm, I don't want to add like the weird f um, like drinking fountain thing for the animals, you know, just adding a little pool, like that is okay. But if you have an animal like that depends on the water, then I think it's always a good idea to add the water first so that you can kind of work off of it because it will be like a central point. And like I said, to me, I think with this like whole floating island idea, water just like falling down is is so important. I think, I don't know why, it, it just, in my head, it makes sense, okay? Um, <laughs> so I wanted to add this and um, so that was what I wanted to do first. And, um, I also, like, while doing it, developed an idea of what animal I wanted to put where. I'm not 100% sure yet, but, you know, when I started creating this, I obviously had to start thinking, you know, what animals would make sense on what islands, because there's going to be islands without water, which technically, you know, obviously that's unrealistic, because every animal needs to drink, except for koalas look it up um but uh yeah like i said this is unrealistic as it can be okay so yeah um but um yeah i had to start thinking about this and then also which is something that i kind of don't usually do is i had to stop putting in like the fx effects <laughs> um like at a very early stage i don't usually do that if i use the fx stuff which i try to avoid doing i prefer using the waterfalls from the aquatic pack but i think sometimes they look nice and sometimes they're unavoidable like in this case obviously we can't use the uh aquatic um waterfalls because you know the water falls and there was no backside to it, which looks stupid <laughs> with these. Um, so we had to use the FX, right? Um, and I don't usually use FX before I'm entirely done because they make it run slower and less smooth. So I was kind of also scared for the footage and uh, and so I usually try to avoid this to you know put the fx in early and also i don't like like when i'm actually like playing with animals already i don't like that to like place them properly you have to run the game because if it's paused you don't really see it too well like every time you uh pull one out from the menu it's not started yet if that makes sense so you always have to have the game running and to be able to place them and there's just a lot of things that i just i just kind of you know make them a pain to work with it's also kind of really hard with the waterfall pieces to get the right perspective which is why you see me always like shift to the side and see if i'm actually placing them properly and i, I would say the placement definitely isn't perfect but it's really really hard to be perfect with these pieces like if you look at it like on this waterfall section because it's very big especially i think you can tell sometimes that I'm just so far off because it's so hard to tell um, where you've actually placed it. And then the the actual thing that 
amidst the water is so small like this little tiny thing is so small it's so hard to grab to move later on because it's also hard to see and it's, oh, it's just, just the whole thing um so that was a struggle but i did group all of them together so in case i later on realized okay the fx are really like making the footage lag a lot or making it lag when i'm building on it i can just grab the entire group move it to the side and then move back um what you see now is changing the watercolor because i realized this is unrealistic. I don't have to have a realistic watercolor. I can have it like super, like unrealistically beautifully blue. And so I did. Um, also the color of the rocks, I kind of like argued with myself from this. I kind of wanted to have the like mossy tropical rocks, but for these rocks, it was kind of my thought process that Okay, this is unrealistic, it's dreamy, and I wanted like clear rocks that almost look like you would draw rocks if you were to draw a picture. You would draw rocks in a grey town, right? So that was kind of what I wanted. I also really like how they look with this like very, very bl bright blue water. Um, and then, I don't know if you noticed, but in the bag, I did put like a pink backdrop and this is kind of more for photo purposes, I guess, because when I did do the thumbnail for the first video, I kind of run into this issue of having the backdrop be basically the entrance, like this like standard entrance building, and then like trees and stuff, and so the islands didn't really like pop out. So I wanted a background, at first it was blue, but then I realized like, um, more of like a dream, like a sunset setting, I wanted this to be this pink, and then I think with this like, bright rocks and the bright blue uh water and this like pinkish background and then green islands it just looks super vibrant and like just pretty <laughs> as a color combination i think and um i'm just also thinking obviously of the future i'm planning to use very very bright um um hopefully almost unrealistically bright and lush foliage um i don't know if that will be the next video because i think the next video we'll actually decide on animals because i think at a certain point of a build you have to know what animal you're building for i when creating actual zoos always know the animal first and then continue and that is i, I think i heard this tip before but that is also a tip that i can totally give you from my own experience pick the animal first don't start building blindly um, because the habitat will make so much more sense if you build it with the animal in mind. So it, just building an, uh, a habitat and then picking an animal for it, it will never be the same as um, specifically building a habitat for a certain animal. Obviously, if you enjoy getting um, enclosures from the workshop, for example, that's a different story. But uh, if you want to build yourself, I would suggest knowing the animal first so that is probably what we're going to be doing in the next episode no promises though <laughs> but um I, I i don't know we also have to figure out how to get them on the island i think i'll just put all of them into like one enclosure and move them up there but we'll get there when we get there but i would say we don't have super much time left so um there's one thing that i wanted to talk about that you will see in a second that i think these aquatic waterfalls really really um are improved drastically by what i'm doing right now which is adding uh like these like dead trees i think that realistically i mean i've never been close to the top of a waterfall i guess but i mean with the rocks and all that i think like debris and like uh, stakes and dead trees would just collect up there and I chose the birch trees because I felt like it kind of added to this like bright unrealistic color tones I wouldn't really want the um too realist I mean a birch is realistic whatever but you know it, it fit the color story that's what I'm trying to say okay but we're almost at the end thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it I hope to see you around another time bye